what we're standing before here is a model of the Connecticut River Valley, um, the period being the last glacial period. We're looking at a model that has the ice that was in the valley retreating. This is some 15,000 years ago. And it covered the region about 20,000 years ago. But we're going to take a step back first and talk about what this ice was covering. About 200 million years ago, this valley opened up. And when it opened up, during the breakup of Pangaea, it was an opportunity for things to live. And the things that lived in the valley some 200 million years ago were dinosaurs. They roamed the valley, leaving their footmarks in places here, there, and everywhere within the valley itself. And it was Edward Hitchcock who, in about 1835, first began to scientifically articulate what these marks were that were found in the muds and the sands that were the rocks that he found beneath his feet. Had it not been for these glaciers, those rocks would not be the rocks that would be beneath his feet. The glaciers came through and literally scoured the valley of all of the debris, you know, layer after layer, exposing what we see today. Ice ages are a normal part of what happens on the Earth. What occurs is you begin to have this evaporation that occurs off of the oceans. So the evaporation comes off, and then it comes down as snow on the poles. Evaporation, snow, evaporation, 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 snow over literally hundreds and hundreds of years. The snow builds up, the ice pack gets thicker, and as it gets thick enough, it begins to slowly push itself down under the weight of the ice, and it moves down into the continental areas. And as it does so, it eventually reached all the way down to what is now Long Island Sound, Nantucket, and Martha's Vineyard, where the ice sheet covered. And in Amherst, in particular, it was close to a half mile deep. As the ice moved into this region from north to south, it began to slowly creep down. I mean, literally, a mile thickness of ice is beginning to move over our region. And as it does this, the ice on the very bottom of the glacier is melting. And it's beginning to, the water is beginning to seep into the cracks between the rocks, the bedrock. And as it seeps into the cracks, it refreezes, expands a little bit, cracks the rock open, and embeds that rock, plucks it out of the bedrock into the glacier itself, plucking one rock after another, after another, after another, until it's plucked. All of the debris and all of the rock from this region is being plucked and carried. So it's scouring all of New England, just ripping up the last pieces of sediment all the way until it reached Long Island, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and Cape Cod. The debris was brought down to this point. And where the debris ended up being deposited, creating what's called an end moraine, is Long Island, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket all in through here. Then the glacier slowly began to retreat back. And as it did so, it was retreating and it was melting back. And as it melted back, there was a place that a fair amount of debris was deposited where the Connecticut River Valley had opened many years ago. And that area ended up creating what is now called Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Hence, Rocky Hill, it's a pile of rocks. The entire region is completely blocked off with rocks that were deposited. And as the glacier began to melt back, water collected behind that natural dam. And as it collected behind the natural dam, it created this lake that extended from Rocky Hill, Connecticut, almost to the Canadian border. To get a little perspective here, the mountain range in the foreground is the Holyoke Range. Mount Tom is over here. You come up and you have Mount Sugarloaf here. The blue indicates Glacial Lake Hitchcock. This moment in time where the glacier has retreated to about Mount Sugarloaf is about 13,000 years ago. It was Edward Hitchcock's role as the state geologist that brought to him a bevy of information. That information was geologic evidence related to glaciers being in the valley those glaciers that came through the valley scoured the valley, exposing rock that was nearly 200 million years old. And it's that 200 million year old rock where the dinosaur trackways were found.